testing Google Analytics using Google Analytics. So in this lesson, we're going to show you a few different reports you can look at to try to identify potential problems with your Google Analytics implementation. First, we're going to look at the hostname report. The hostname report can be accessed by going to Audience on the left, Navigation, Technology, and then Network. And once we're on the Network report, we're actually going to toggle the primary domain dimension over to hostname. Now what the hostname report does is report back to us which domain, essentially, is firing our Google Analytics code. Some common issues you want to look for here are this. First, we want to make sure that the host name or the domain that we're trying to track actually appears here. We also want to make sure that other domains do not appear here, which we're not trying to track. Now, in some situations, we see clients share the same code across multiple sites. Situations like that, it'd be pretty common to see different host names firing here. Some other things you're going to expect to see here is analytic spam. So we'll see a number of domain names here that really make no sense and usually carry just a few sessions. These we can pretty much ignore, but the main thing we really want to look for are that our client's website or our website isn't firing on multiple different host names. If it is, we'll want to resolve the issue. The next report we want to look at is the referrals report. So the referrals report can be accessed using the acquisition menu on the left navigation and then referrals. In the referral traffic report, this tells us essentially the different websites which send traffic to our website. Now a common problem with Google Analytics is a situation where your own domain is being recorded as a referral source. So in this particular example, our domain is affordablemineralmakeup.com. What we want to make sure is that affordablemineralmakeup.com does not appear as a source of traffic. And when it does, it commonly means that we're missing Google Analytics on a certain page of our site or some other implementation issue. So the first thing you want to check is whether the domain you're trying to track appears as a referral. Quick way to do that is just to start typing in the domain you're trying to track in the filter box up here to see if anything appears. In this situation, we don't have the issue, so we don't see any traffic there. So we're good on that. The one other thing we want to look for here, particularly in e-commerce implementations, but also in sites where you jump from domain to domain, maybe you use subdomains for part of your website for your blog or something like that, what you're going to want to look for are referrals from those sources. So things like paypal.com being a referral would be something to look for. Or if, again, if you're looking for a subdomain of some sort. In either case, you don't want to see those as referral sources. Um, essentially what that traffic is doing is creating new sessions each time that referral comes through. It's inflating your traffic and throwing off your metrics completely. So, so really the two things to look for here are your own domain being a referral source and any sort of third-party domain which is part of your user flow. So that, could, again, could be PayPal, bouncing off PayPal to process payment or jumping over to a subdomain for your blog or something like that. Now, the last thing we really want to check quickly when we're using Google Analytics to test Google Analytics are goals. So each goal implementation is different, as you know. What we want to look for are specific things that tend to be outliers when there are problems. So the first thing would be um, on this particular site, our goal has a specific landing page location. So we've set a destination URL for our goal. And in our particular example, the URL looks something like this, save 20 on today's order. What we want to look at though, and what we want to make sure are that there aren't other goal completion locations that are here. And the reason is we have a very specific landing page, which is our confirmation page for our newsletter sign up, and that's this. If we saw other URLs here, we would know there's some sort of problem. Now again, your goals may be set up differently or may be set up the same way, but what you do really want to make sure are that your goal is firing only when it should fire. And this would be one way to know that there's an issue. Now another thing to look at is going to be conversion reports when you look at specific sources. So what we're going to do next is jump over to the acquisition menu and then to channels. And this is really a good place to start to do this. Now, what we want to take a look at are both e-commerce and goal conversions. And what we're looking for, again, is outliers. We're looking for traffic sources that maybe it's not sensible that they have such a high conversion amount. Or maybe the opposite is true, where we're sending a lot of traffic through a specific channel grouping and we're not seeing any conversions there. 
And in either which case, it sometimes is an indicator that there's some sort of analytics implementation issue. It may just be a bad campaign or low quality traffic, but we just wanna look for those outliers. So some things we see commonly that stand out would be, let's say you're running a certain type of campaign. So we do a lot of email marketing here. Um, you know, we have a good number of sessions and we do see some transactions there. So because we see that email is tracking all the way through, we can, we can start to assume that the e-commerce portion of our implementation is pretty solid because it's actually carrying over the campaign data all the way through. And the same applies to organic search and referrals uh, and, and direct as well. Um, where we might see a problem or might think that there is a problem would be a situation where 100% of our conversions, for example, might come from direct. And a lot of times that means that the session's been lost for some reason. Another example would be, and maybe it's not 100%, it could even be 90%, but just an, an abnormal percentage. Another thing to look at could be as well that certain referral traffic, for example, is majority of all um, transactions. So let's go back to that PayPal example. If you can imagine the user flow of filling a shopping cart and then being directed to PayPal to check out and then coming back to the website, if your analytics weren't set up correctly, you could see that 100% or most of your sales comes from PayPal. So what we might want to do in this referral channel is just drill down and make sure that PayPal is not the referral that's actually sending that traffic. And in this particular case, after sorting for transactions, we can see that it's um, a couple of different sources, neither of which are PayPal. So again, there's not a, uh, there isn't really a silver bullet of sorts that tells you exactly when to question whether e-commerce tracking or goal tracking isn't working correctly. But I think the main takeaway is really to look for those outliers and say, well, wait a minute, why is it that almost all of my conversions come from direct traffic? Maybe there's a problem. Or why do almost all my conversions come from referral traffic? Um, and those just being a couple too. But you know, they're really the good signs, the things to look for to be uh, more certain that the analytics is set up correctly would be to see that certain campaigns, such as email campaigns, or if you're running pay-per-click, to see that that data is actually coming through here. And, is act and this email uh, campaigns, for example, are actually getting credited with transactions and revenue. Um, when you do see specific campaigns able to carry all the way through the process, it's a good sign that things are working pretty well. Um, so these are just a couple different reports and a couple different ways to sort of look at the Google Analytics data to make sure that you're getting the conversion tracking you think you are. Um, and uh, you know, as we would like to reiterate the importance of making sure that your Google Analytics implementation is correct can't be overstated. The marketing decisions you make, how much to spend on a pay-per-click campaign, how much time to spend social media marketing, all of these things tie into the fact that this data has to be right. So it's good to go through here. Um, so between using Google Analytics and Screaming Frog, just a couple great tools to sort of ensure that Google Analytics is implemented correctly.